For as long as there is youth in the world, the current of civilization will never flow backwards. Owo mo de o tu pepe. Ta gba lagbe owo kegbe. Do you know what that means? In the farm, the pepe is where you rest after working so hard under the sun. The pepe is also on top of a small hut sometimes where you keep your equipment and the clothes you wear during farming. So if you spread your cloth on top of the roof and you ask a young man to take it, he'll say, Dad, my hand cannot reach. But when it is time to take some seed from the gourd, uh, the, the, the G-O-U-R-D, the father will say, bring it, and his hand cannot enter. And say, okay, you, you are in charge of the seed today. Take it out of the gourd. There's one more. Because of the wisdom of the aged and the wisdom of the young, that's how Elife was built. How do you see that in Yoruba? How does God put it? Does God want a disconnect between, the, between two of them? And it shall come to pass, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will see dreams. I say, okay, they are retired, they are dreaming. We have the vision, they have the dreams. No, what God is saying is, you have such fall and foresight, but they will have insight into your foresight so that there will be stability. Let's appreciate the Legacy Youth Fellowship this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please be seated. It is an awesome moment. Good morning, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Please say to your neighbor, peace to, peace to you. Peace to your house. Peace to all that you have, including your territory of influence. And despite the circumstances and situation, great peace to our beloved nation, Nigeria. In the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It gives me such a great pleasure and joy to witness another youth month in the CGCC. And I also consider it a great privilege and honor to be asked by the youth pastor and his leadership team to give the word for today. Because by the grace of God, they would take over from next Sunday to the end of the month. The only difference this time is that side the scriptures will be handled by those who are handling it. And then they would take the main service from the beginning to the end. Plus other things that we want to do this week. As previously ad advertised, the theme of the youth month 2024 is unshaking the heritage of faith. You may be seated. Because these days I've learned to keep time allotted to me, uh, and we've had a beautiful time of worship, I'll just go straight into this. What's the theme? Unshaking the heritage of faith. I was reliably informed that both arms of the Legacy Youth Fellowship, namely the Teens Fellowship, comprising of those who are 13 to 17 years of age, am I correct, sir? And the older youth from age 18 and above are responsible for this timely theme. 
the older youth was the church and the world to know that despite the challenges that we face as a nation, including the economic downturn and the insecurities that we encounter daily, that these young men and women are not shaking. Oh, that's a good place to bless them. And as for the Teens Fellowship, they desire to know the heritage of faith that is theirs as a result of the strides of the fathers of faith, the strides they will obtain that will cause us all to be unshaken in the midst of societal turmoil and crisis. So if the older generation of you said, we are now shaking, the younger ones said, how do you get there? Tell us a secret so that together we all will be unshaking. Can I hear amen? amen? Please put your hands together for this fantastic theme and the biblical basis for same that was put together by the Legacy Youth Fellowship. You know, for years, I chose the theme for every event, for years, as I'm led by the Lord. But in recent years, I tell them, you two write your own theme. I've fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. Not finish my course. But you two begin to do it. No be so. Yes, Family pastor. Yes, do I dictate the theme to you? Pastor Simi, uh, Pastor uh, Apostle Mike, do I dictate things to you? Any of you that have preached, have I given you a topic at any time to preach on? As I pray, whatever the Holy Spirit tells you is what you bring to the church. Now to see the youth of the church Choosing such an incredible, fantastic theme by themselves. I salute your generation. Oh, put your hands together for them. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. They chose their own text of scripture. And I would just concur. I recall... When President Muhammadu Buhari met with presidential candidates, 23 of us, before the primary, he stood before us and said there will be no election. That was the agreement we had. There will be no election, there will be selection. Just as we chose the chairman of the party, we will also select one that will be a candidate. And he said the following words. I've given liberty to the governors to choose their own representatives, those who are going, and for them to take another turn for those who are staying. Now I'm asking you, give me a free hand to choose who my successor will be. That day, I dove my heart and I said, you have fulfilled your side of the bargain. Over to you. And a number of things happened that many don't understand that more or less put his hands in chain. And he couldn't do that. So last minute, there was election that was not planned for. So when you didn't see me go from nation to nation, or city to city, governor to governor, delegate to delegate, it's because there was a previous agreement and discussion that it would not be by election, it would be by selection. And now here is the one you have elected. This is how far he has brought you. But selection is coming. I say selection is coming. Now, why am I saying this? What has this got to do with the youth? In that meeting, after the president spoke, a number of other people spoke, but Gudu said, I bought the form to be a candidate, but whoever you choose as your candidate, I will support and drop. Governor Bagudu said that. And after others have spoken, the last person to speak was the then Vice President of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibadu. You can put this on air. I don't say what is not true. 
And Professor Yemi Ashibaje got up. He said, I'm going to rely heavily on my profession. When Supreme Court judges meet to deliver a judgment, the lead judge will pronounce his own judgment. And his brothers, brother judges will say, I concur. He said, the chief judge for this occasion is the president of Nigeria. And what he has said, I concur. So I concur to your theme this morning. That's why I shared this story. <laughs> and I concur with your spot on text of scripture that you have chosen. It only shows the apple does not fall far from the tree. So if you please turn your Bible with me to Psalm 125. They chose verse 1. I will add four more verses to it. Psalm 125 verse 1 to 5 will be the basis of our unshaken faith in the midst of challenges. It reads, and I quote, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous reach out their hands to iniquity. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts. Can I hear a good amen? Yeah. Verse number five. As for such as turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them away with the workers of iniquity. Peace be upon Nigeria. Yeah. I can't hear your amen. Yeah. How would this peace come? The peace that will come is between verses 4 and 5. Because we are now moved. Verse 4 one more time. Verse 4. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good. And to those who are upright in their hearts. When that is done by God, then it turns to those who are crooked. As for such as turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them away with the workers of iniquity. Peace be upon Israel and peace be upon Nigeria. In the mighty name of Jesus. The second scripture, I think this is by teenagers, 2 Timothy chapter 1, 3 to 7. They want to see the legacy of faith. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience. As my forefathers did. So who did he learn from? From his forefathers. As my forefathers did. As without ceasing. I remember you in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see you. Be mindful of your tears. That I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance. The genuine faith that is in you. Timothy this genuine faith is in you. But where does it come from? which dwell first, your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And I'm persuaded it's in you also. How many generations do you see there? I can hear you. The first, Lois. The second, Eunice. And the third, Timothy. Now, you are going to get into the depth of the message when I get to one generation who praise your work to another generation and declare your mighty acts. We are going to get there. And you are going to see the consistency of the word of God that if three generations can stand, one passing the baton to the other, and they do not fail to pass it, that Timothy does not fail to pass it to the next, you can banish idolatry from the land. You can banish poverty from the land if you continue. Therefore, I remind you, Timothy, to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. There's hardly no one except you are new in this church, as turning as it was, that on two or three occasions, I've not laid my hands on you. I remember one of my friends, uh, Professor uh, Transformation, I've forgotten his name now. Anigbogo was in one of the vigils where that took place. He said, he was talking, Pastor, I pity you tonight. Oh God, look at the multitudes. How would he cope? But God strengthened me. And when we got here, at least on one occasion or two, 
I had to lay my hands on everyone here, asking God, the grace that I carry, Father, let it be their portion. I was so tired one night, I ran through the crowd to the back after I attended to those who were here. And Shegun pitied me and followed me thinking, if my father is going to fall down, I'll catch him. Your father did not fall down. You will not fall either. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The first text of scripture is the basis for the unshaken part of this year's theme. And the second text of scripture relates to the heritage of faith. I totally agree, as I said, with both texts. And I'm thankful to God that the leadership of the Legacy Team Fellowship our cause and their spot on. Can I hear amen? amen? Now, one of the significant praises of David that captures the essence of the theme for the Youth Month 2024 is Psalm 145. I'll read from verse 1 to 13. Psalm 145, verse 1 to 13. I will extol, extol you, if you look at it, it's a praise, Psalm. The title, what does the title say? Psalm 145, why are you like this? Huh? I can't hear what you're saying. Because you don't open your Bible, you just read the screen. And I'm making it a part of your culture because you will not take the screen home. Psalm 145, what is the title, Pastor Ike? The praise of David. This is one of his praises throughout the scripture. It's a major praise. I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor, splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness. They must have witnessed it, to memorize it, and to tell others. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness, and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. All your works shall praise you. Can I hear amen? amen. I can hear it loud enough. Amen. Make it louder like never before. Amen. Because I'm his work, you are his work. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. To make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Your kingdom is what? I can't hear you. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures Throughout all generations. Why will his dominion endure throughout all generations? Verse 13 is the key, is the answer. Why will his dominion endure throughout all generations? That everyone will come under the rulership of God. Verse number 13. Oh, no, 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 no. Verse number, what is that? Verse number three? Is it three? Four? Go on, I'll get there. One generation shall praise your works to another generation and shall declare your mighty acts. I tell my children at home, I'm the keeper of the history of our family. The older generation I got our history from, my mother, 
and other people, let me share with you who we are and where we are going. Okay. I said, don't go this way. This way we produce this, and that way we produce that. Go this way. If you have not gone on that way before, you have nothing to show those who are coming. If you have not paid the price and there are no scars to show, you are just, uh, you are a floater. One generation will praise your work to another and declare your mighty works. And as they continue to do so, his dominion will be throughout all generations. And if you are looking for a biblical uh, text of scripture, uh, uh, to show why his dominion will go forever, ever throughout all generations is contingent upon Psalm 100, verse 4. Psalm 100, verse number 4. Thank God for one generation praising his work to another generation. <laughs> but look at verse 4, Psalm 100. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving to his cause with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Next verse. Is that the last verse? Verse 3. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, verse 5. Thank you. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, if you are going to examine, exercise dominion, as intended by God from the beginning for mankind, in your generation, and you intend to pass the same to the next generation, the church of God must endure in your generation. If there's no truth in you, it is the righteous that will exercise dominion. For the Lord's dominion to extend to all generations is truth must abide, remain in every generation. Is that okay? Yes. Brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, times may change, men may differ, but the expectation of God remains the same for every generation. Say that with me. Times may change, times may change. and men may differ. The expectation of God remains the same for every generation. You may be seated. Lesson number one today for the Legacy Youth Fellowship is simple. If your generation will exercise dominion as God intended for mankind from the beginning, then is truth and praise delivered to you by the generations before you must never depart from your lives and your mouths. I didn't just say truth must not depart from your mouth. Praise must not depart from your mouth. I'm saying the truth and the praise Delivered by the generations before you who received them from God must not depart from your life and from your mouth. I thank God for those fantastic songs you have brought into the body of Christ. Some I understand, some I don't. And when you sing them, I tag along. Sometimes I come to tell you the foolishness in the song. Other times I keep quiet until you can take it. Do you understand me? Look at how long ago the Psalms were composed. As God changed his mind about his praise, make it, uh, is this psychedelic? What songs do they sing? I don't know. I'm not condemning your songs. But let not the praise and the truth the fathers received and transmit to you depart from your life. If you embrace this lesson and make it your rule of life, the following three blessings will pursue and overtake you. You don't have to struggle. If you just receive, I'm talking of direct word from heaven, 
that energize psalmists amongst us to tap into the mind of God and bring praises forth. And you make them a rule of life that you continue to say the same things and sing the same songs. Certain blessings will pursue you and overtake you. Number one, you will experience the days of heaven on the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 11, 10 to 21, please pay attention. Before you allow pioneers of error and apostates to sweep you off your feet, by the time you find out, it will almost be too late. And sometimes coming back will not be easy. But be like the prodigal whose father celebrated when he returned. You don't just experience the days of heaven and earth. Certain things precede that. For the land which you go to possess, it can be your destiny, it can be a dream, it can be a goal that God has showed you. For the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you have come. You're not going to operate the same way you're operating in the world when you come to Zion. Where you sowed your seed and watered it by food as a vegetable garden. Please go on. But the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys. I'm glad the word cross is used there. You must learn how to carry your cross. Your cross to possess land is a land of hills and valleys which drinks water from the rain of heaven. A land for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it from the beginning of the year to the very end of the year. And it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments, which I command you today, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will give you the rain for your land in its season. This is a direct charge to the fathers. The early rain and the latter rain, that you may gather in your grain, your new wine and your oil. What else? I will send grass in your fields for your livestock, that you may eat and be filled. Now here's the instruction to the fathers. Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you, and he shut up the heavens so that there be no rain, and the land yield no produce, and you perish quickly from the good land which the Lord has given you. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine where? I can't hear you. Therefore, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand. They must govern what you do with your hand and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. They must govern what you look at. You can have the word of God in you and focus on pornography. It's not possible. It means the word is not in you. And what do you do? You shall teach them to your children Speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. This is a problem of many parents. Huh? They just send their children to Sunday school. They do not have such care for them at home. Give me verse 19. Stop outsourcing your children just to Sunday school. Begin to teach them at home. The failure of parental responsibilities had led to recklessness in the church and even in the children's church. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. What other time do you have not to do it? All the time. Oh, my children once told me, Dad, what do you think about this? I said, the scripture says, you always say the scripture says, what do you say? What the scripture says? I live by it. I think in scriptures and I talk from that perspective. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates so that before people enter, they know who you are. Why? If you teach your children while you lie down, while you rise up, while you are walking, and you let the whole world know who you are and your children embrace the same thing, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them like the days of the heavens above the earth. If the fathers know it and they don't teach their children, the moment they step out, 
their children go back into Babylon. Hello. If you don't teach it and model it, what happens is when they are under your roof, everything goes well. The moment they step out, Babylon is waiting for them. Because you have not taught them. So if you are holy, family, fathers, mothers, children are going to experience the days of heaven on earth. You must teach them what has produced in your life. So that they can embrace, apply, and they will experience the same thing in their lives. One of my children said to me, I don't want to mention names because they say you always talk everything in church, so we stop talking everything to you. Mm. It's okay. Is that that? I don't know. Where is Shagun? Is it Shagun? Or is it she? Or is it Visaya? Or, or is it wrote to me? It's one of you, I know. You will confess soon. Is that that? We don't know exactly how we'll be able to survive when we step out of here. I said, why? He said, since we were born, there has been, never been power outage in our family. Bam, electricity pops as the light is gone. Is it you? Tell the truth. Uh-huh, it's his child. It's his child. Thank you for telling the truth. He said, how are we going to sustain such life? I said, the way I've sustained it. How have I sustained it? You want to know? If you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God and obey his commandments, these blessings shall pursue you and overtake you. You now have to run after blessings, they will run after you. Amen. It's the only way I've learned to live. That's why I spend nine hours in Bible study on Mondays and Tuesdays and take a break and continue at the weekend. Just stay there and study, not for preaching. I let the Bible read me first so I can read it accurately. If you act into the voice, of, that's the GPS you have for this world. You know GPS? You have one in your car. Hmm? When you put the GPS on, what happens? It gives you the map, and there's a voice of a man or a lady talking to you. The voice in this case is the voice of the Spirit. The map is the Bible. That's your GPS to navigate this world if you are going to work and operate on the open heavens so that you experience the days of heaven upon the earth. That's the first blessing you have. You want the second? If you are able to pass it from generation to generation, not only will heavens open over your, you and your descendants so that you experience the days of heaven on the earth, you will also arise and shine because the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. I've never been a Babalawo in my life, but I studied extensively, not if I, but a book by Professor Bolajido, the then prelate of Methodist Church. The book is titled, Ele du Mare, The Yoruba Concept of God. That when the, from the book, I'm telling you now, because you see a man, it will be a sick for no. He said the Babalawa will sit in the morning. He will say, Ojumama wo gba kuro kuro do. Ogan joga wo gba washo washo kon kosho. And then on top of that, to let you know he knows God, you say, Meta Meta Ela, Agogoela, Ewi for Bakwe Mode, Agogoela, Meta Meta Ela, Agogoela. Meta Meta Ela is his concept of the Trinity God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Don't let me go hungry today because there's nothing being cooked in my house. I can't hear pounded. The am being pounded. There's no stew being cooked. Help me. 
Immediately he finishes reciting that, somebody will knock the door. They will bring him. So they continue in it. And you want to understand where that is from? God in diverse manner and in various has spoken to the fathers through the prophets. But now he's speaking through his son. <laughs> you know why they, what they carry cannot function anymore? Because the atmosphere has changed. They tell you, I read your ku, I read your sha, I read your monigeli gele, amarayoni read it, it worked before. But now, when they did Kata Bridge and Eco Bridge, they've gotten to the bottom of the sea. They found what is there. So it cannot work, time has changed. In the days of the Jews, a live offering of a, the blood of goats and heaver will work. But since the blood of Jesus was shed on Calvary, it does not work. So what is it that works that will cause the glory of God to be seen upon you? Three generations at least. Lois, Eunice, and Timothy must have the spirit of God upon them and they must continue as the Babalawas would do and they were getting results from the dark world. If you want to get results from the kingdom of God and from the kingdom of his light, the spirit of God must be upon you and the word that is given you must be in your mouth. And you must ensure it's in the mouth of your children and in the mouths of your children's children. That way is the only way you arise and shine. Grass darkness will cover the earth. They will continue in their incantation. But the spirit of the Lord will rise upon you. Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59 verse number 20. The Redeemer will come to where? Zion. And to those who turn from transgressions in Jacob, says the Lord. What follows? As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. When you do that, what follows? Isaiah 60. Arise and shine, <laughs> for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Do you know what it means for his glory to be seen upon you? You don't understand. The Yoruba say, Ayromoba, Kamari Dan, Saki. There's no way you see a prince. And you do not see the glory of his father's throne following him everywhere. Princes don't go to every school like you went to. There are special schools that will train them for the future. Prince Philip was once asked a question. Did you ever claim Prince Charles, who is now King Charles, said, several times? He said, why do you claim him? He said, because one day he's going to be king. Said, why, why don't you allow parents to claim? He said, they are the ones he will rule over. Darkness shall cover the earth and gross dark. Whoa. Ask him. Woo. And I told this woman, I want five girls. She went to pray for three boys. And they came one after the other. So she won. Three, two. But she forgot that the three men who also married three women. And when you add three to two, you become five girls. <laughs> you understand me? I still have my five girls, whether you like it or not. And she also is a draw. She has, huh? I don't know. I have five girls. How many boys does she have? Three boys plus the husband of Bumi and Fisayo is a draw. <laughs> when God steps in, he does not take sides, he takes over. Can I hear amen? amen. Look at how the, 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 the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. When the Spirit is upon you, you ensure it's upon your children, it's upon your children's children, and you are saying the same word that God has put in your mouth, then in the midst of great darkness, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. 
darkness shall cover the earth. Gross with people. But the glory of the God will be seen upon you because you are a prince of the most high God. The Gentiles then shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together, they come to you. Your son shall come from afar and your daughter shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant. You are shining. Okinshi Pomedo. It's not grease. You're radiant and your heart shall swell with joy. Why? Because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. Come. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. Good morning, sir. Stand there. The wealth of the nations have come to you or they are coming? Where is this suit from? Dubai. Dubai. Where is this shirt from? Dubai. Dubai. Where is this from? Dubai. Dubai. Where is the shoe from? Dubai. Are you, a, are you a, uh, is it from Emirates land? <laughs> no, Dubai is serving you. When you dress and you are going, it is Dubai that is serving you. You can look at all that you have here. Some suits are from German, uh, Germany. Some are from Italy. Some are from France. Your toothpaste, your toothbrush. Nations are rising to serve you on daily basis, but you don't know who you are. You can see that it's because your wife goes to Dubai to buy things. I know the secret. She bought for me also. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Do you see the continuum, the continuity of scripture? The spirit upon you, the word upon your mouth, from your mouth, the mouth of your children, and the mouth of your children, children. Lois, Eunice, Timothy. The third blessing that is guaranteed if that continuity and with that continuity is that you become doers of the word and you'll be blessed in all that you do. I said that in the first service. You become a doer of the word. You have imbibed it. You have embraced it. You are speaking it. Then you become a doer of the word. Anyone who does the word is one doing the walk of ministry. If you don't do the word, you're not doing the walk. Psalm 1, 1 to 3. If you understand this psalm, you will never pray for blessing anymore because you are blessed when you follow the dictates. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree, what? Right. That planted that told in the midst of his sentence is capital P. That plant does not plant itself. Those who are planted in the house of God shall flourish in the courts of our God. That's a tree planted by God. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever it does shall prosper. Now, uh, in the MBA classes, they teach you multiple income, don't they? So, in your multiple income theory, you do this, you do that, you do that, and you do that. And from those streams, from those streams, you are sustained. If one dries up, no, no. For this tree that is planted, rivers are there. Do you know what? Because God planted it, it's from the resource of that tree that you plant others. It's not that you are struggling to make them happen. They will just come to you naturally. Men will come to you and have this idea, I don't have capital. Mm, what is the ratio of commission? How do, we, how do we, I'll give you the capital, what do we have? And you can take 60%, sir. I take 40%. It's the owner of the dream, but you are getting benefits. Why? Because you have the capital. It's from a state. You are from the capital. Our capital is where? In heaven. 
James, if you're a doer of the word, you become a doer of the work. Everything you do will prosper. James 1, 21 to 25. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word. Once it's implanted in you, can't be separated from you. You can't be separated from it. Receive with meekness, with gentleness, with teachable spirit, the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. Go on. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, like those Sunday, Sunday candidates, they hear it on Sunday, then they turn into submarine from Monday to Friday or Saturday, then they come out of their marine <laughs> clothes and wear nice dress to impress people in church on Sunday. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. Huh? For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the what was he hearing before? Word. When you follow the word, it defines your work. It's a draw of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Now, if that ever stops, listen to me attentively. Gen Z, is that what you are called? That's an assumption. When you call yourself Gen Z, it means there will be no generation after you. You lie to yourself. Z is the last word of the alphabet. But who told you you are the last generation? What you do in your generation can start the alphabet again. Then a new generation arises and they call it Gen A. <laughs> oh, Gen Alpha. Okay, so I'm going to digital. I'm analog. A, B, C, Nemo, come here, come alpha, beta. Only in alpha, beta, and yeah. Did I mention your name? Uh -huh. If that ever stops, if one generation does not praise God's work to the next generation, and declare the mighty works of God to them, we are just one generation away from idolatry. Judges chapter 2, verse 7 to 23. Judges 2, 7 to 23. So the people served the Lord when? I can't hear you. Have you noticed that when general superintendents or general overseers die, suddenly the generation that they serve will remain. Others who are not granted, we go. At the end, the church becomes an empty hall. And then the places in the church will be cemeteries for those who have believed what the man taught. The next generation is not factored in. That's what is happening to Britain, UK now that their church buildings are now disco halls or pharmacies and mosques. Hello? And that's going to happen to you if you do not hack into this world today. Before the citadel was built, I visited different places. I went as far as Lorraine, Ohio. I saw the building built by Charles Finney a lawyer and one of the greatest evangelists in his days. If Charles Finney will be going to Yaba to preach and he's leaving Ikeja GRA, he didn't live in Akuonjo. <laughs> Who am I talking about? I'm just using the illustration. From the moment he steps into the train or car, Everyone in the park will be convicted of their sins. You'll be crying without him talking because of the grace he carried and the anointing of God upon his life. 
And when he will get to the place, three sentences, four sentences, sinners are repenting. Have you seen the video of, of, of Billy Graham at any time? He somehow he composed himself. It's from Billy Graham I learned that when you are going to your room in a hotel and the lift opens and your staff are not around you, but there's a woman in the lift, don't go in. So, why, sir? Because her word will be against your word if she says you did anything. Yes, and several times the lift will open. You can go ahead, madam. I'm waiting for my people. A YouTuber, Danny. If one snake enters here, we all rise and kill. But if ten snakes, everybody here will scatter. That's why it took Peter, James, and John everywhere he went. Do you understand me? Okay. If Joshua served God, and the generation after Joshua served God, and they did not pass it to the third generation, that generation will be idolaters. Let's read Joshua. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua. So Joshua passed the baton to the elders after him. But between those elders after him and the next generation, the baton was not passed. So the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died. When he was 110 years old, just like Joseph. See, I'm in that company. That's my target. Whether my arm is painful, whether I can sleep or I could not sleep in the night, whatever I went through, I will hit 110. Yeah. And on that day, I will come in here and said, It's been nice serving you. God bless you. Bye bye, planet Earth. It's been nice knowing you. And I'll go home, break bread with my children go to my bed, and they come knocking in the evening, Daddy, Daddy is going to heaven. If you come near to pray, <laughs> you become a prey of a dirty slap. Because <laughs> I've gone. And they buried him within the border of his inheritance at Timnath Harris, in the mountains of Ephraim on the north side of Mount Gehash. When all that generation had been gathered to their fathers, Another generation arose after them who did not know the Lord nor the work which he had done for Israel because one generation had stopped praising his work to another generation. Then the children of Israel did even the sight of the Lord and served the bears. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt and they followed other gods or among the gods of the people who were all around them. And they bowed down to them, Omar and Lufar, Oh my elder, do you understand me? They bow down to other gods, cocaine. They bow down to other gods, pornography. They bow down to other gods, Igbo. If someone drinks Igbo all the time and he sings and you are dancing, you are Igbo drinker too. And they bow down to them and they provoke the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and the Ashtoreths. And the anger of the Lord was, not, was hot against Israel. So he delivered them into the hands of plunderers who despoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Wherever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for calamity. As the Lord had said and as the Lord had sworn to them. And they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the hand. Of those who plundered them. Yeah, they would not listen to their judges. <laughs> but they played the harlot with other gods and bowed down to them. They will come in here today. They will go another place next week. They will go to third place next week. They are already programmed. You, you don't understand what happens to you. Uh, except you have imbibed the true word of God. And you have a deep-seated hunger for the true word of God. You buy fake. Yeah, they will not listen to their judges. But they played the hallowed with other gods and bowed down to them. They turned quickly from the way in which their fathers worked. In obeying the commandments of the Lord, they did not do so. And when the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was with the judge. And delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For the Lord was moved to pity by their groaning because of those who oppressed them and harassed them. 
And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they reverted and behaved more corruptly than their fathers by following other gods to serve them and bow down to them. They did not cease from their own doings, nor from their own stubborn way. Then the anger of the Lord was out against Israel, and he said, because this nation has transgressed my covenant which I commanded their fathers, and has all heeded my voice, I also will no longer drive out before them any of the nations which Joshua left when he died, so that through them I may test Israel, whether they will keep the ways of the Lord to walk in them as their fathers kept them or oh, not. You know why you have trials? You know why you face challenges? You see mountains that seem insurmountable? It's because there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect somewhere. And God is calling you back home. Legacy Youth Fellowship. Learn this lesson forever. If there's this disconnect between the values of this house that God has given to us, you disconnect from it, and you think, I can do better. Then you really do not know what calamity follows. One generation must praise his work to another generation and declare the mighty works of God. Therefore, heaven should be open over you. And what would you get? The days of heaven on earth. What do you get again? Uh, the glory of the Lord will rise upon you. And finally, whatever you do, whether you are sewing dresses, whether you are doing events, uh -huh, at Inuda, uh, whatever you do, whether you're a consultant traveling everywhere, it will protect you and make you fruitful and productive. That others will be saying, what an amazing woman, what an amazing man. But if you disconnect, what follows is calamity and you can't afford it, neither can we afford it. May I go today? I still have a little time. I'm just on lesson one. Shall I do one or two more lessons? Because they gave me time to 12.30. I'm programmed. They said, 10 minutes after 11, you take over, I got here. And they said, by 12.30, you must back it. I bow. I surrender. Lesson number two. If you don't get the lesson now, after your youth week, I'll bring the other lesson. So this is starter. And we'll finish with the main course at the appropriate time. Are you enjoying the starter? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. This appetizer, is it, is, it, is it wonderful for you? Yes, sir. Would you stay connected or you disconnect? When you know the things that benefit you, you don't disconnect from them. Can I hear amen? amen? Lesson number two. I'm so glad that David knew the import of today's message. And for that reason, he erected a very strong bridge between the young and the old. When he said in Psalm 37 verse 25, that I have been young, now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. I have been young. Now I'm old. It's a bridge he was building between the young and the older generation. I've been young, now I'm old. And this is my observation. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. The fifth year of this ministry, God taught me a lesson and I pass it to you as a heritage of faith. That number one, God will not forsake the righteous. Number two, God will not justify the wicked. Number three, the, righteous man, the righteousness of a righteous man will answer for him in times to come. And number four, the wickedness of a wicked man will pour upon his own hell. I've been young, now I'm old. I've not seen the righteous forsaking no seed, beg bread. Do you know that now verse 25 that we just read of Psalm 37 is based on the comparison between the heritage of the righteous and the calamity of the wicked as stated in the first 20 verses of Psalm 37. You can jump into the conclusion and say, 
I've been young now, I'm old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, 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 no. Read the first 20 verses that produce the conclusion. Are we ready? Verse 1. What's the title? Who can tell me the title? The heritage of the righteous and what? And the calamity of the wicked. Before you get to that conclusion, you need to read this and learn. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. And many of you are envious of them when they are riding Lamborghini. When Olubumi turned 25, his classmates at the Emory University said, what is that buying you, no, 21st? What is that buying you for your 21st anniversary? Is it Lamborghini? And they mentioned all the cars. He said, you don't know what stuff our family is made up of. My wife and I did not even visit the campus. We greeted her on her 21st birthday. Sorry. You are there to study, not for party or merriment. Am I being old? But it's our 21st birthday. She will have several birthdays. The lessons and the values she imbibed, Amy, birthday. The only bad day I did in, 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 in Lisha B. Grammar School got me into trouble. Yes. Was, uh, shall I tell you this? Yes, sir. It was 1972. Huh? It was my birthday and it was a school day. So the little money I'd saved, I bought Paco Biscuit. What do you call it? Yes. Cabinet, cabin. 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 cabin biscuit. Cabin. That's what those in cabinet should be eating in Nigeria. So that those who are suffering from hunger can have some little left over. I bought cabin biscuit. And before going to school, I put the cabin biscuit pack beside myself. And I prayed my Islamic prayer. I was a Muslim. And we went to school. And I came on top of the class. First position. And my friend who was living in our house said, I know the secret. The man made incantations into his cabinet, cabin biscuit. Is it cabinet? Cabin. (laughs) (laughs) He he made incantations before distributing. When you all ate, you couldn't remember anything. That's why his first position. I'm not joking with you. I forgave the man. I became his best man when he got married and he used my Mercedes Benz for it. I forgive completely. But you know what happened? They frowned at my history paper. They said, "Mm -mm. there's something here. He either copied or something happened. Because how could you produce what you are taught this way? And they said, I must retake the paper. I was so angry that I went to Aye Rose River. (laughs) Quiet. And I did not only cram the history, the papers, I crammed the comma, the, the colon, the and the full stop. So much so that when Ojelabi died and his son was going to reproduce his book, he had heard what happened back then. And he said, I would like to reproduce this book if you could help me. And I said, is this an old version or a new edition? He said, it's still the same thing. I say, open to page 237. History had been an established social practice, sorry, slavery had been an established social practice in West Africa long before the advent of Europeans. What gave rise to slavery had its roots in the procreation of cheap labor to do farming in West Africa. He said, sir, when did you learn this? 1972. With comma and full stop. When they marked the next paper, they said, He's either a genius or we don't know who he is. I'm a learner. So I didn't give her Lamborghini. I didn't give her anything. When she finished college and got married, I gave her what I could afford, a Mercedes Benz. I said, be riding. 
But right now, the Mercedes Benz is back in my house. <laughs> because she left the jackpot to London. But guess what? They are jackpotting back. <laughs> All my children will return to me. Yeah. Not necessarily living in my house. Because this country will flourish again. Yeah. <laughs> the husband got a new job with Barclays Bank and jackpot. And his salary was more than what Central Bank was paying him. I understand. I am not arguing. But the day is coming when Barclays Bank of UK will not be able to afford what you are earning in Nigeria. Yeah. They'll be queen up yes, to access our passport. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Verse 1 again, Psalm 37. Do not fret because of the evil doers. Nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on Samovita. Huh? And feed on a Dikaikon. And feed on pounded yam. And feed on assorted meal. Feed on his faithfulness. God will not change his character midstream. He's a faithful God yesterday, today, and forever. He's utterly dependable. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. I'm not sure you understand that. No, it's not what you desire and bring to him that he will rub a stamp. He will originate it and drop it in your spirit. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evil doers shall be cut up, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth for yet a little while. And the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. Matu konai, oh me matu bai. The Lord laughs at him. For he sees that his day is coming. The days of those pursuing you, the days are around the corner. Yeah. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, to slay those who are of all pride conduct, so that when their own children are in Ivy League schools and when they are eating wonderful food, those, those who are shouting a beam power will be on the streets. Their sword shall enter their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. But the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish. And the enemies of the Lord like the splendor of the meadows shall vanish into smoke. They shall vanish away. Go on. That's the first 20 verses. Go to the 25th verse now. You can read this also. The wicked borrows and does not repay. They know how to arrange with the bank. Righteous <laughs> forsaken. Okay, thank you. I've been young. Now I'm old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken. Noisy senders. That's a breach that David erected between the young and the old who walk on the path of righteousness and who are saying to them, follow me. Things are about to change. Follow me. Don't go into hiding. Follow me. Those who look down upon you, they are about to look up to you. Do you understand me? Follow me. Let's continue to go. Let's continue to go until blessings overtake you. They pursue you. And Can I hear amen? Yeah. All right. Now we are going to plow that bridge. I have about 10 minutes more. 
We are going to go on that bridge together today. I'll come back by the grace of God in the days to come. Please note the huge difference between the righteous and the wicked. The huge difference is simple. It is the churches, the choices of the righteous that will bring them the dividends that God promised, like they promised you dividends of democracy and you're here to get it. And it is the choices of the wicked that will attract their calamities to them. Therefore, in order to ensure that the Gen Z understands fully how the victories that were obtained by the fathers in their own generation must be ongoing in their own generation, the sons of Korah also gave to the younger generation the biblical portrait of redemption remembered in present dishonor. Redemption remembered in present dishonor. One of my sons in the faith went to America to obtain his social security and then came back with his wife through Turkey. They landed in Istanbul. And while he was helping a woman that was carrying baby and all kinds of things, out of, out of a kind heart to help them, he forgot his own laptop bag in the plane. He was walking and the wife asked him, where is your laptop bag? He said, yay, I forgot. And he went to the door of the plane that he just disembarked from and said, this is my ticket. This is my seat number. If you look above, you see this bag there. They say, hey. ah, you step down without taking your bag. Okay, show us the seat. Show us your passport. Oh, it's Nigerian passport. Sorry, you cannot enter again. You have to go to uh, Lost But Found Center. And they quickly ran there to the Lost But Found Center and said, uh, sorry, this happened. They said, we must come here. They said, the people in that plane had not come here. So there's no way you can come to see anything. Show us your passport. Oh, Nigeria, you can't enter here. Please, please go. When the matter was reported to me, <laughs> I couldn't go to Istanbul to fight, but we have an embassy there. So I called one of the ambassadors in Nigeria here. I said, this happened to my son. He said, give me the details. They gave the details, and the ambassador said, sir, we will search everywhere and make sure we get it back. Let him give us letter of authority quickly so that when we find it, we know where to send it to. And they have complied with that. We are waiting for the bag to return. But why were they not allowed just either to enter or for some of the uh, uh, flight agents or whatever you call them, what do you call them? St stewards? Okay. To just go in and pick it, he said, oh, you carry Nigerian passport. You can't enter here. Look at the distress upon our nation. Look at the disgrace that we receive everywhere. That the grand, green passport has become an abomination. When I left on... UK in 1980, I did not obtain British visa. I got six months visa at the entry port. I spent Naira on the streets of, on Oxford Street. And in, what's the name of that big store I've told you before? Harrods, you see, Ekabo, Kedu, uh, Sonu de Sua. Naira is accepted here. In 1985, I changed one Naira for one dollar eight cents. What is the rate of exchange now? Oh, my cultivator, Firabon. Huh? They stepped in and ruined our economy and impoverished our people, and they think they are in power. You lost the throne. Amen. Listen, the sons of Korah had to establish what happened in the days of the fathers so that the sons can cry to God to redeem them from distress. Give me some 144 quickly. We have heard with our ears, O oh God. Our fathers have told us how they built the citadel. That was not by selling oil and mantle and foot washing and lying to people. Our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days. In days of old, you drove out the nations with your hand, but then you planted. 
You afflicted the peoples and cast them out. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword. Nor did their own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your hand, and the light of your countenance. Because you favored them. You are my king, O God. Command victories for Jacob. Through you, we push down our enemies. And through your name, we trample those who rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. Huh? No, I will not trust, but you have saved us from our enemies and have put to shame those who hated us. I will continue from here next time. If the fathers obtained victories, the children must learn how they did it so that they can follow the same pattern because they don't have to reinvent the wheel. When the enemies came against Isaac, he dug another well. But what names did he give them? The names that Abraham gave them. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. God has sorted everything out. It's a finished work that is asking you to start. In the name of Jesus, in your generation, you will not fail. In your generation, you will not fall. In your generation, you will not falter. If you run away, you run back. Nothing that you have lost will be taken away from you. They will be restored back to you. Stand to your feet. We thank you, our Father, for the lessons of faith, for the legacy of faith. Our fathers are not shaken because they trust you. Therefore, we will not trust our bows and our arrows. We will trust you forever. As the sons of Korah wrote, we will follow. And every distress, every displeasure, every wrong, every shame that we have suffered. Remember what you said to me in January 1996 in Israel. I said to you, Father, this is the land that you gave to Abraham. What do you have to say about my own land and my nation? And you spoke to me from Savannah chapter 3. In every place that you have received shame, you are going to have fame because of my name. This day, because of your name, we change the narrative of shame to fame. That the name Nigeria will begin to excite the world. Thank you, Father, for answers coming from your presence. In Jesus' mighty name. Happy Youth Month.